Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to preach, and I pray that you fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me preach the word that you've laid on me and help people to hear and understand and put it to work. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. So when we're out knocking doors, a lot of times we run into say people just like Brother Sean found out and said, and when we ask them, do you have a King James Bible? Most of the time they'll say yes, but then a, a lot of times I've heard people say, well, yeah, I have a King James, and then I got the ESV or the NIV and whatever else, and they'll say, well, I'd like to look at all of them to, to, and, you know, and compare the verses to try to understand the meaning. And, and I'm thinking in my head, it's like, no, <laughs> that's exactly Satan's trap. He wants to obscure the word with all these fake Bibles so that, that believers are not able to rightly divide God's word. And when you think about it, the Bible is written to believers. It's not written to unbelievers. So people that aren't saved, it doesn't matter whether they read the King James or the NIV or these other books. Right. But it's the believers. Those are the guys that we need to make sure that they're on King James only. Can you imagine yourself reading a corrupted book for whatever reason? And, you know, that's just awful. And we should try to rescue our brothers and sisters out of that trap. Uh, and so the title of my sermon is Don't Let a Corrupt Bible Vex Your Righteous Soul. And we know what happened with Job. And, and so if you look at uh, Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, one reason why believers get backslidden, I think, is because they're not reading God's Word. They're not reading the King James Bible in the English language. And so they're missing that spiritual nutrition. They don't have that power. And, and they're not making right decisions. And their preachers, the, the church they go to, isn't preaching and expounding on, the, on God's Word. And so they get all kinds of bad doctrine from that. And their life goes, turns from there. So the application part of the sermon is, is to get saved people to consider reading only the King James. As, as Brother Sean pointed out, it's like a sword. So if you think about it, it's like, okay, so here's the King James. It's a sharp sword. It's titanium, it, and, and uh, everything is, is just really balanced. And then you've got these other books that, that claim to be swords, but it might be like a cardboard cutout. <laughs> or it's a, uh, a butter knife with a plastic handle that's kind of cracked and is ready to fall off. <laughs> And, and so, you know, if a person thinks that, well, sometimes I'll use this, this uh, cardboard sword, sometimes I'll use the real sword, that's just silly. You should have your best sword with you at all times yeah. and know how to use it. And so how do we get people to consider the King James only? Well, even a backslidden believer will hear the, the, the word of God if you explain it to them, right? In John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And so we should use scripture to point people to the, to the King James only. Uh, turn to Timothy 3.16. So, of course, always, first things first, pray. So when we're at the door and we're talking to a saved person, you know, uh, and we're talking about the, the King James Bible, we should be praying that that he, you know, think about what we're saying, and especially the silent partner. Yeah. Um, and then ask them some questions. You know, ask them, do you believe that the Bible is God's word and, and not man's word? Because it's still... Uh, and, they, and they should get this one right. I mean, this if they're truly a believer. And, and if not, you know, we can point them to like uh, 2 Timothy um, 3.16 or 2 Peter 1.22. And, uh, and so 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And, and so it's by inspiration of God. Uh, turn to Psalm uh, 12, 6. So then we should next ask them if they believe that God's word is preserved, that, that God has preserved his word. And, and Psalm 12, uh, 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them for this generation, from this generation forever. And, and so ask them, you know, if God has preserved his word forever, does that mean it's always existed? And, and, and yes, of course. And then ask them, well, if God's words weren't preserved, then we wouldn't have a 100% trustworthy Bible today, would we? But we do. We've got the King James Bible. It was translated in 1611. And this is probably where we can spend a little bit of time talking about, like, the source, the, the, the Greek manuscripts for the New Testament. And, and so the Textus Receptus was used to uh, translate uh, from, uh, for the King James, and its first printing was in 1516, and it was compiled from about 6 
ancient Greek manuscripts, and those manuscripts were all essentially the same as uh, 5,400 uh, plus uh, other ancient manuscripts. And, and so we could believe that God preserved his uh, Greek New Testament because we had uh, 5,400 copies that were handwritten and they said more or less the same thing. And just to get an idea of what 5,400 is, if I had 5,400 of, of a book this size, it would fill up boxes three feet tall and three feet out to the front from that wall to that wall. So that's a lot of handwritten copies that say more or less the same thing. And then on the other hand, you have the uh, uh, West Court, Westcott and Hort text, which came from uh, two other ancient manuscripts that were the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus. And, and those were found uh, in the middle uh, 1800s. And, and those two texts by themselves differ a lot from themselves. They don't even agree with themselves, and, and they're way off from the Textus Receptus. And so now you've got uh, three documents that d don't agree with each other, and, uh, and you ha so you have to ask, well, all of them can't be right. If God preserved his word, one of those has to be right. And we believe, of course, that it's the Textus Receptus. I mean, it just makes sense. There's that many copies of it, handwritten copies. And so since God preserved his word forever and ever, it couldn't have been at any time lost. And these other uh, sat, uh, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus were like in the uh, library of the, of the Vatican or in the trash can at St. Catherine's Covenant. And so, you know, that doesn't make any sense. And, and, and because the King James and these corrupted Bibles are translated from these different manuscripts, that's when you have actual differences in, in the verses. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, one of the examples is uh, Matthew 7, 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And so that's the King James reading. But in the corrupt books, a lot of them will say uh, difficult or hard is the way. And then here's one that I thought was pretty funny, the message. The way to, the way to life, to God, is vigorous and requires total attention. It's like, wow, if that isn't works, I don't know what is. And, and, then, and in the word English Bible, how narrow is the gate and restricted is the way that leads to life. Sounds like Calvinism to me. It's like, well, no, you can go, but yeah, uh, no matter how much you want to believe, you can't go. So, so obviously, these are, these are just garbage books. And, uh, you know, Matthew 4.4, 4, um, this is Jesus speaking, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we're commanded to live by every word. And so that means that God must have also given us access to a Bible that has every word 100% trustworthy. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, and we believe that's the King James Bible because the Textus Receptus effectively matches across 5,400 and some copies but yet you see in the bookstore, you know, four or five hundred different corrupted Bibles. You know, there was the, the first one it was in English was the RSV, and that was in uh, 1885. And, uh, and then, you know, NIV and ESV, and they all have different versions of themselves. And obviously those can't be the Word of God because they all say different things just because they're translated from the different ancient Greek manuscripts. In 1 Corinthians 4.33, For God is not the author of confusion. And so we know then that, uh, that the King James is the book that we should, uh, that's God's word that has the power that it needs. So when we're at the door and we're talking to that saved person, you know, we, we can try to suggest to them that they read from the King James only. You know, maybe something as like an experiment. It, like you said, okay, you read from these other books, but you know, what if you just read out of the King James only for a week or, and, and see how it goes? And, you know, it, it's an important thing to understand reading the right book. So it seems like it'd be worth your time to do that little bit of an experiment. And, and you know, sometimes I, I tell people, you know, that if, if you haven't read the King James Bible before, the sentence structure is a little bit odd. You know, it's front to back. But just stick with it because after a while, it, it'll become very natural to you. And then, uh, and then point them to the uh, preserved Bible video that is going to be released on Tuesday. 
It was an excellent uh, job of explaining all this and it's got all the detailed numbers. So even the most analytic person could be convinced, I believe. Uh, and, uh, you know, make them understand that this, that they're just vexing their own soul by reading these other books because they're corrupt. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to preach and, and uh, pray that people do understand that they need to stick with the King James only and not vex their souls with these other corrupt books. In Jesus' name, amen.